Hello. Welcome to Fooly February. You're watching Mad Mirth. Today I bring you a Valentine's special. We're going to play Paka Plus, a dating simulator where your girlfriend turns into a llama. This should be fun! I stopped playing Zelda for this, oh my god. Okay. And we're in. Um. Oh. A violin melody could be heard in the distance. It's a pleasing sound. Summer on the highlands is calm and clear with gentle breezes. As I stand in the grassy plains, still damp with morning dew, I quietly close my eyes and lend my ear to that refreshing melody. The love of my life is at my side. We hold each other's hands, wishing we could stay here like this forever. Hmm? Isn't it still summer vacation? Why is my alarm going? I'm going back to sleep. It's nearly halfway through summer vacation. I, I Kazuma Saiki cling greedily to my pillow and dreams, determined to sleep in. The abrupt ringing of my cell phone tears me away from my thoughts of laziness. <laughs> Hello, Kazuma! Hello? Oh, Yukari, it's you! Are you- are you up and out of bed? Yeah, I'm up. I'm- I mean, I just woke up. What's going on? Why? You- you're calling me so early. Why? You know, we have to be at school today to prepare for the school festival, right? Make sure you show up. Really? Oh, right. Gotcha. Oh, jeez. Everything's gonna turn out fine, right? Yeah, it will. I'll get ready right away. It seems that preparations for the school festival are starting today, even though we're in the middle of summer vacation. A single, you should do it too, Kazuma, from my girlfriend Yukari, was all it took to make me a committee member. Or, that's what I remember at least. Well, I'll be waiting at the usual bus stop, okay? Make sure to be to breakfast. I'm gonna turn the speed up. Making me stop. Oh, there we go. That. Yeah, yeah, you know. You, you sound like my mom. Jeez, if you have time to joke around, then hurry up and get ready. Got it, so I'll see you at the usual spot at the usual time. After Yukari's wake-up call, I quickly get ready and jump into, or rather, onto my sweet ride. Since it's just a bicycle, I'd rush out of my house. I ride off to school, pedaling as hard as I can. Yukari should have gotten on the bus at the usual time, so if I don't hurry, I'm gonna be late. Out of breath and with sweat running down my brow, I sweat running down my brow. I make my way to the bus stop near the school. I wait for the bus your car should be on as I catch my breath. A few minutes later, the bus comes right off schedule. This long-haired girl slips off the the bus alone. Good morning, Kazuma. She gives me a smile. Wait, uh, she gives me a familiar bright smile with a familiar greeting. Her name is Yukari Izumi. We're both freshmen in Class 1A of Sekoi Private High School. She's my girlfriend. She has long, shimmering hair, doe eyes, and a delicate build that makes you worry you'd snap her in half if you hugged her too tightly. Basically, she's a girl so cute it feels like a waste on me. That's Yukari Izumi. Good morning. Looks like you're still sleepy. I am indeed sleepy. 
I thought about going back to bed, but I couldn't keep you, Cody, waiting for her by herself. Waiting here by herself. That's why I got here in such a rush, but there's no need to make anything of it. I changed the subject. By the way, Yukari, what was our class doing for the festival again? Oh, jeez, you don't remember it all. A maid cafe. Oh, I see. That's right. That was it. Faces, you remember it all. No, that's not true. I honestly have no such memory. We were both there when we decided what to do, too. Yukari stares at me with an expression that hinges on astonishment, but she nevertheless patiently describes the maid cafe that her class will be hosting. Things started with someone in our class reminiscing about visiting a successful Akihabara maid cafe on his Tokyo vacation. All the guys threw up their hands to support and applaud the speaker, but they still had to get the girls on board. Surprisingly, the proposal was approved quickly. The vast majority of girls agreed, with comments as such as I've always wanted to wear a maid outfit and actually I have to do something like that. Then our committee leader, Ayaka Shinozawa, sealed the deal by saying, I'll make sure to prepare suitable maid uniforms for all the girls in class. Nobody was left out of object and our class merely decided on doing a refreshment booth with the maid cafe theme. Or so the story goes. I feel like a footstand isn't an option that involves lots of work for little gain, profit-wise. But I'll be happy if I get to see you, Karina, <laughs> made clothes. <laughs> As we talk about it, the school we attend comes into view. Looking up into the sky, the sunshine is getting stronger. The glaringly hot summer sun is merciless. Seems like today's going to be another hot one. <laughs> Committee leader Shinozawa is waiting in the classroom by herself when we arrive. Morning, Shinozawa. You're early as usual. Good morning, Saki. You cutty. Yeah, that's a terrible whisper. <laughs> Good morning, Ayaka. As always, you two seem to be getting along pretty well. This is for us. Committee leader who easily realized the boys' collective desire for May Cafe is considered by most of the class to be level headed and earnest. However, I also know that she's a hardcore uniform maniac. Yukari told me that Shinozawa can't resist cute outfits. <laughs> Her collection doesn't just include the uniforms of nearby high schools, restaurants, and maid cafes. Oh, it even goes as far as having the real ones actually housekeepers of English nobility war. I've heard rumors of special costume room that she was ha uh, she has at home, but the truth of that claim is beyond even Yukari's understanding. You're getting along so well, I feel like the classroom's temperature is rising. <laughs> what? What can we, 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 we do about that, Kazuma? Yukari looks at me for help, but, 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 Yukari, you, you're very mistaken if you think that you could always get help from me. Uh, hey now, hey now, you're a rock star, get your game on, let's play! <laughs> <laughs> if you don't cut it out, Yukari, you'll... wait, wait, wrong voice. Uh, hey, hey now, <laughs> if you don't cut it out, Yukari, you'll get embarrassed and eat this room up even more! No, 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 you, you two! One more committee member arrives late. Ah, oh, whoops. Uh, we've got important things to do. We can pick a new car more later. True, let's call a temporary ceasefire for now and pick up again after the meeting. What? More later? You don't need to. Alright, let's start the first meeting. Yes, as a member of the organizing committee, I'm getting fired up. Hey, listen to me! Meeting starts amidst Yukari's adorable protest. Well, that should do for today. This is only our first meeting, but Shinozawa had already detailed things so minutely that it ends quickly. You really command things like a military strategist. Maybe I should start calling you Kong Ming. What the fuck is. It? <laughs> Let me handle rallying the people. Sales 
should just be fine as well. I wouldn't want to get on your bad side. Thank you. Flattery won't get you anywhere, you know. I didn't mean to flatter her, but she seems in high spirits after seeing everything go as planned. After that quick meeting, we leave Shinozawa and go out for a stroll through town. At the shopping center in front of the station, we try to hide from the hot rays of the sun as we go from the record store to the bookshop. I don't know what it is about this, but this looks extremely vaporwave. Maybe it's just me. We go through the arcade and into the fast food place. I drink a cold soda in the well air conditioned room. Yukari doesn't like soda, so she's sipping iced tea daintily through a straw. A fleeting moment in the evening of a hot summer. I'm looking forward to the, to the school festival, aren't you? Yeah, I can't wait to see you in a maid outfit, to be honest. Jeez. But I'm surprised you accept wearing maid clothes. No qualms about it. Girls all wish they could transform. Robots and disguise. Is that how it goes? So even you want to try being someone else, Yukari? <laughs> well, I wonder. I don't really understand girls' difficult feelings, but if she says so, then it's probably right. Oops, <laughs> it's already late. I need to head home. Yukari looks at her watch. Oh. You're right. As we trade silly jokes, time passes us by. It's not that we're doing anything or going anywhere in particular, it's just being together makes it a wonderful time. Such times are small and simple, but unique to the lives of wholesome students, and just being able to experience them is enough for me. Well then, be careful getting home. Yeah, you too, Cosma. Watch out for cars, they're dangerous, you know how that shit goes. Yeah, I know, I've played Frogger plenty of times. Well then, I'll see you tomorrow. See you then. After seeing Yukari off the bus stop, I pedal my way home. Looking up into the red tinted sky while pedaling, I listen to some vaporwave. <laughs> A single white cloud floating not that far off into the ground. Looks to me like a sheep or a camel for some reason or another. What the fuck? Oh. Kazuma! Get the bill for uh, table 3, please! Uh, Raju! You can take a break uh, once you're done. There's a little coffee shop hidden next to the residential area not far from the station. Black Cat Cafe. I've been helping out at this shop far longer than I've attended this school. I wasn't really a part-time job, but rather my family has been on good terms with the people there since I was little, so they're nice to me as well. As And when I saw how busy the owner was, I just started helping out here and there. You know, during my childhood years, I ended up coming to the Black Cat, cat, or Black cat instead of the park whenever I couldn't find a place to play. Because I like staring at girls with me. Oh wait, this isn't the main place, is it? Never mind. <laughs> so now I'm closer to the owner than even my own father, who never really played with me much. <laughs> the owner, Akio Mitaka, runs the shop with his two daughters, but there are times when he'll take any help he can get. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, now is then. I've just seen off with the last customer, and now it's just me and the owner inside the shop. Wait, was that Kazuma? Or I'm getting confused. <laughs> It's strange how large the inside of the shop feels when it's only the two of us in here, since it's a rather small cafe. Oh, you're having a mid cafe at your school? I'm just chatting with the owners since there isn't much of anything else to do. Yeah, it just suddenly happened, so... I've been bogged down with preparing for the festival. A students are the main event at school festival. After our... Make uh, sure to do it properly. Uh, please don't add on more pressure. Uh, here or now, you can't go half heartedly into this. If you have any concerns, I will grab Russian. After our, I know a thing or two about cafe. 
Really, I could think of certain someone that would love hearing that, actually. As I say that, I imagine a grinning Shinozawa saying, I'll take you up on that. So, like, uh, the cakes for the maid cafe, how much time is needed to make them, and how much do we spend on ingredients? Well, it's uh, not too, so much the, the time as uh, equipment. Uh, will you uh, be able to use uh, the kitchen? No, the cook gloves reserve the kitchen. I, we have to repair everything in our classrooms. So, our getting oven, oven will be a different character. Then we'll need to buy one from somewhere. I don't fucking know. If so, so our expenses will be pretty. Hi! The owner folds his arms and goes, <laughs> This is just a suggestion. Oh, but what if Breck Cat was to surprise the cakes for the festival? Well, are you sure? His sudden suggestion surprises me. In fact, the Black Cat Cafe cake sets are known to be delicious even around the neighborhood. So much so that they've been featured in magazines before. Customers would definitely love having those cakes in the maid cafe. Yeah, if you could leave Brackcap business cars near the register, in return, that'd be great. That won't be a problem at all. I think we'll need quite a lot, though. Will that be fine? This is for you, Kazuma-san. I will work it out, too. Uh, thanks. Can we go over the details next time? A sure thing. I'll tell Shinozawa about this later. I don't want to give the owner too much trouble, but... Well, this is Shinozawa we're talking about, so it should be fine. And there's one more thing I want to check on with the owner. Uh, boss, can I have time off at the end of the month? My shift is Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, but it can be changed freely depending on my and the owner's situation. The end of the month, August 31st, is actually Yukari's birthday. Since it's her birthday, I'd rather be by her side than working. Of course, sir, it's fine. Uh, is, uh, is there anything, sir, is there some things you're doing? It's Yukari's birthday, so I was thinking of taking her somewhere nice. I see. So you shall be punished, then. Yes, you must commit to seppuku. I mean, I have fun here. Uh, Thank you very much. Actually, there's something uh, related that I wanted to ask you about. Oh, what would that be? I was thinking about getting her some type of present. Okay. What do girls like getting? Cause I don't know. Ah, uh, well. No, I mean, uh, a <laughs> well, conversary. What a gift from you, Curry? Would make you happy, Kazuma-san. Even though I'm asking him, I get a question in response. <laughs> Is that what I'm uh, look, looking for questions, look for answers? Uh, me? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't really have anything in particular we want. Maybe an Xbox? I think I'd like anything Yukari picks out for me. Hopefully it's an Xbox. Right, sir. Uh, that's your answer. You must get her Xbox. Oh, so you say I should get her an Xbox? Oh, it really is the thought that counts, I guess. As that is what I believe. She likes music, though. So maybe I'll find her some violin related accessories. The owner smiles and disappears behind the counter. Probably going to check on the coffee beans. Huh? Welcome. Oh, oh, you. You, Carrie, it's you. It's you? Is that any way to fucking talk to me? I understand, ma'am. I right, uh, would this seat be adequate? I lead her to a seat near the window as I say that. Yes, thank you, bitch. May I please take your order? Well, it's a little late, but I believe I shall take my lunch. Fetch me today's lunch menu. The A combo comes with a carbonara, whereas the B combo has a rice omelet. Both come with complimentary salad and drink. Then I'll take the rice omelet, please say! 
I knew you'd go for that. You really like your rice omelets. You know, because the shop's fluffy, melty rice omelet is so fucking good. As to be expected from a regular, quite the discerning eye. I'll be here shortly. Boss, Bikambo, order up. Oh, sorry, my hands are furry right now. Can you make it to Kazuma, son? Roger that. As you heard. So, you're making it for me today. I shall not disappoint, madam. Okay. I put on my apron as I head to the kitchen. Sometimes I have to wheel the frying pan instead of when the owner is busy roasting the beans. I practice my cooking fluffy melty rice omelet so often it's my forte. Alright, that should be good. I place the omelet over the kitchen and rice, cut it down by its center and open up a gap, and finish it up by topping everything with sauce. But I feel Ugh. a little mischievous today because I fucking ate it. Ugh. <laughs> I add a little something to the salad too. Just a little bit of mischief. Oh. Sorry to keep you waiting. I mean, uh, sorry to keep you waiting. One deluxe fluffy melting rice omelet. Wow, <laughs> it looks so great. Ikari quickly brings a spoonful of delicious rice omelet to her mouth. Mmm, yummy. Why do girls always look this happy when they eat something delicious? Her happiness is contagious. But just as she bites into the salad, her eyes go wide and she just freezes up. Oh, so it really is something you notice right away. She, she furiously washes the salad down with water and looks at me in protest, tears in her eyes. Jeez, you put okra in my salad on purpose. No, I don't fucking like it, didn't you? <laughs> yep, I did. Usually there's no okra in the salad, but it's on the house. <laughs> Do you know it's good for your complexion? Oh, God, am I your fucking jerk? I'm sorry. Don't be mad. You'll ruin that pretty face. Yeah, whatever. Yukari puffs on her cheeks, but keeps eating the rice omelet. You say whatever, but you're still eating the rice omelet. Because it's just so good, even with your fucking okra. I, it's, it's fine. It's, it's not like it's in the rice omelet's fault. With warm feelings filling my heart, I look at Yukari and wonder what to get for her birthday. I think it I should go with that Xbox. I know it's the thought that counts. That's why it gotta be the Xbox. But I, I want her to be happy getting it. <sighs> if I get her the Xbox, I'll be able to play it too. I mean, fuck. I'll try taking note of what grabs her attention next time. Maybe I could get her in the Xbox. It's 7.40. Yukari steps off the bus right on schedule. Good. You didn't sleep in today. What do you mean today? It's not like I slept in last time. Oh? If I hadn't called you then, you definitely would have slept in. Fine. I'll admit you were a big help at the time. As long as you understand. Well, let's keep going. We're meeting up for the school festival again. Shinozawa is handling the costumes as organized a platoon of seamstresses from the Handicrafts Club. Other team members are busy working on the greeting manual and putting the menu together. What Yukiri and I are doing is making the list of what needs to be purchased. Hmm. White table class would be very nice. Wouldn't pink be better if it's a maid cafe? I think that would be cute too, but since the outfits are pink, I think it'd be better if they were the same, or weren't the same. You need to go with my idea because they're right, and yours are. I see, so maid outfits are pink. Hmm, hey, you imagined something reaches now, didn't you? No, don't worry about it, you're cute no matter what you wear. That's not what I mean! I mean, jeez, come on, you need to help me think of stuff. 
even though my ideas are what I'm gonna go with. Sorry, sorry. Also, we need plates and cups and shit. Yeah, we need a sign as well that says, give me an Xbox. Oh, that's right. So I guess that's about it. We check over the list we've made. According to the schedule, we'll be skipping the next meeting to go shopping. We really need to put on some thought into this since I want to buy everything in one go. Yeah, this should be alright. I think so. If you remember everything else, can we just add it then? What's after this? Since everyone's working on their own task, it looks like we could go if we're finished with our part. Then how about we go do our homework together in the library? Oh, I'm happy you asked me. But I have to practice after this. Oh shit. Uh, oops. Orchestra club, was it? Stupid. Yeah. Can't miss that now. Go to your best, I guess. Sorry about that. It's fine, it's fine, just fucking go. I'm stupid. Yukari apologizes again and leaves the classroom. I thought about joining the club at the start of school, but working on Mr. Mitaka's shop was both enjoyable and fulfilling, so I decided against it. After Yukari leaves for a club, I jumped into the conversations of classmates who were helping with preparations. It's nice that they've shown up, but unfortunately it's too early to start doing any actually work, so they're just waiting around. Hey, Saiki, you finished the DLC mission put out this week? Sandy Plains or Corpeco, the mobs it summons are max size too! Oh yeah, that's already out. Seriously? You didn't beat it yet? My bad, I've been busy lately. Busy? Meaning with Izumi? Must be nice, having a real girlfriend. I, because I just, you know, kiss my pillow. I, uh, uh, well, anyways, it's not what I mean. We're hitting the hunting grounds later. You're coming, whether you like it or not. I got it, I got it. Five. Shit. The school bell rings while we're talking about all that dumb shit, so we'll leave as well. I think about just heading back, but thoughts of you, Curry, resurface. Come to think of it, I've never actually seen Yukari up close while she's playing that violin. I've cheered her on during competitions and tournaments and stuff, but she doesn't want to be watched when she's practicing because it's embarrassing her. Feels like she's practicing every day performing that stupid fucking thing. It really must be that hard. It piques my interest, so I decide to go peek in the music room. The music room is soundproof, even though I can hear it through the fucking walls. But just as the slightest hint of the violin melody can be heard in the hallway, even though it's supposed to be soundproof. This song, I've heard it somewhere before. It's Pachabelle's Cannon. Hello? Opening the door, there's Yukari, elegantly playing her violin. It doesn't seem there are any other students in the music room. She keeps playing. Unaware of my arrival. It doesn't feel right interrupting, so I'll wait until she's finished. Yukari has been playing the violin since she was little. I remember being told at some point that Pachabell's cannon was the first piece she learned. She plays this piece so as to not forget the beginnings. I don't know much about classical music, but I could tell the sound from her violin is crystal fucking clear. It's pure. Honest sound. If I listen to it with my eyes closed, it's as if the sound is probing the depths of my own heart and feelings. What kind of person am I? In terms of hobbies, I just play some games from time to time. <laughs> Even my part-time job slips at the cafe aren't as much as a job, they're just a way for me to relax by helping out a bit. I never seriously put forth real effort into anything! Yukari's earnest expressions and the movement of her delicate arms speak volumes of the time she's poured in the music. I feel a bit envious of her. I wasn't thinking about that. The music stops. Yukari has turned to see me. Huh? Kazuma? Were you listening? Yeah, I was. You should have told me if you were coming. Nah, I 
thought I'd just peek in before leaving, but your music is just so beautiful. So. I'm flattering to get you nowhere. I wasn't expecting anything by pressing her. I just said what I felt. Was that Petrabil's cannon? That's right. This song is sort of warming. Yes, I love this piece. It's a song that gets deeper the more I play it, I think. I see. Well, uh, I don't want to get in the way of your practicing, so I'll go. Okay, see you tomorrow. I leave the music room so as to not get in Yukari's way. Closing the door, I hear the sound of the violin start up again. The same song. Pachabelle's Cannon. It really speaks to how much she loves playing the violin. I, I want to find something that I can pour my heart and soul into just as much as Yukari does so I can stand proud beside her. That's what goes through my mind. Ugh. <sighs> Fuck. This is so sad. That's what goes through my mind. I've been thinking about it for fucking all, all night. Oh, it's almost the end of summer vacation. This is around when things start getting fired up in preparation for the school festival. Yukari and I are buying things at the shopping district near our school. I want to talk to Yukari about her birthday while we are out. It's her birthday after all. So I want to take her somewhere with a different feel than our usual dates. Um, plates, right, cups, right, also forks, and knives, and... <coughs> oh, I ate the knives. Uh, we need to get more knives. That's all the table where we need. Yeah, it should be, besides the knives. Also, wet naps and stuff. Aprons will be prepared by the costume guys, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. What happened to the checklist we made earlier? Oh, I have it. She hands me a piece of neatly folded paper from her pocket. Um, also a sign in tablecloths, right? Tablecloths? <laughs> I believe we'll find those in the craft store over there. Where, where do we buy the sign? The the black the black the blackboard thing, right? Maybe a general store? Let's look around in this store. Maybe I can find an Xbox too. We head into the next general store we see. Uh nothing. Yeah. They don't have any. A shame. Come to think of it. Didn't you buy some a bit ago? What was it? It was an ex, uh, yeah. Actually, just a while ago, I was able to find something that would be perfect for Yukari's birthday present inside the store. You know what I got. I thought it would be nice to buy it without her noticing, but it looks like she has. Nah, just bought some slippers since mine have gotten old and I wanted new ones. I blurred out a lie. Hmm, I see. I'm certain she knows I'm probably lying. Yukari, however, doesn't seem to pay it much mind. Maybe she's just being nice. So, where could I, where could we buy one? One what? A signboard. Ah, oh yeah. Yukari remembers what we're searching for and thinks about it, where to get it with, and uh, uh with what? With the oh, with the ho hum sound. Ah uh ha! -huh. Maybe they'll have something over at the new Tokyo Hoods, next to the station, yo! I remember that miscellaneous and everyday general goods store I've been built and opened up earlier this year. Well, let's go there as our last stop. Yeah, okay. Huh? Hmm. What's up, Kazuma? An arcade catches my eyes. I stop moving. No, actually. It's a prize in the UFO catcher that gets my attention. It's an Xbox! New release! An Xbox? Hey, Yukari, mind if I stop in here for a sec? Oh, uh, yeah, that's fine, but... Hey, wait a minute! Before Yukari finishes answering, I rush to the arcade. Yukari races after me in panic. This is... a new release? Right. An albaca figure. 
When you say alpaca, you normally think of a plushie. But this one is a figure. The box is about 12 inches tall, so the figure inside is probably about 6 inches. I put some money into the machine and I think about that. I put in, of course, a 500 yen coin. By putting in 500 yen, I get 3 tries instead of the usual 2, which for those of you who don't know, 500 yen is like 5, 10 cents, something like that, I think. Wait, no, five dollars? Yeah, yeah, it's like five dollars or so. It's like it's like a few dollars. For larger boxes like this, it's obvious that the claw is too weak to grab the middle of the box. My aim is at the front. It will be pushed forward bit by bit by recoil. Steadily nudge it forward with the first and second tries. Sweat pours down my forehead. Then on my third try, can't use the same technique. It won't move any further when it's this far forward. That's why this time, I only use one side of the claw to push against it. Ah, got it. <laughs> wow! It was an early easy spot this time. Piece of cake. <laughs> you sure do like your alpacas. Yeah, I love them. I love them only second to you. That's right, I really love alpacas. If you were to ask me how much I love them, I'd say more than I love eating three times a day. No, that's just crazy. I mean, my love for alpacas began long before the recent alpaca boom. I was given alpaca plush for my birthday when I was, you know, three years old. I really loved it. The rest is history. Hey, Cosmo, are you okay? Yukari calls out to me with a weird expression. Uh, no, it's nothing. Thoughts of alpacas are distracting me. Uh, I'm with Yukari right now, so I need to be thinking about her, not alpacas. <sighs> By the way, Yukari, what? Your birthday is at the end of the month, right? Anywhere special you'd like to go? You remember my birthday? Of course. What man could forget his own girl for his birthday? <laughs> that makes me happy. So, anywhere you want to go? Hmm, let's see. Oh! Yukari points at the arcade while she speaks. Uh, the arcade? Not that! The kingdom! I want to go to Alpaca Kingdom! Alpaca Kingdom? Place filled with alpacas down in Nasu? Yes, that one! Fine with me, you know how much I fucking love alpacas. But this is for your birthday, you know? I love alpacas too, and I was thinking of a place both of us could enjoy it would be nice. <laughs> okay, then let's do that. In front of the station, there's a bus that goes directly there. We can meet up at the usual spot around 8.30. Okay. Sounds good. I also want to go to Alpaca Kingdom. It's no secret. So this trip is a pleasant surprise for me. We require the missing sign and after we bring everything we purchased to the school, I take Yukari out on my bag. Not to the bus stop like usual. Down a dirt path near the river. My house is in the opposite direction. But of course, that doesn't matter. On our way back, neither of us speaks, but both of us are probably only thinking about our trip to the Alpaca Kingdom on the weekend. My head is already filled with curiosity about things like if you could feed them, or if you could ride them, or if you could play video games with them, or if you could play Xbox with them. I mean, uh, with both of us on one bike, we quietly ride home on a dirt path along the riverside. There isn't anything special about it. Just being with it makes me happy. Oh wow, a lot of time's passing. Oh wow. Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. What the hell's going on? That was a lot of, that was a big time skip. Today is a long awaited day for Alpaca Kingdom. Usually I bury myself in my pillow up until the last moment playing Xbox, but today I wake up pretty early. I even get to our meeting place without being late. 
Kari is already there, and she waves happily when she sees me. Good morning, Kazuma. Good morning, Yukari. This is such nice weather today, isn't it? Yes, ideal weather for an outing. <laughs> I wonder what it's going to be like there. I can't wait. I researched everything ahead of time, so I shall lead you to the corner of Alpaca Kingdom, milady. Tips Fedora. Oh, you're so handsome. I'm in your hands now. Uh, yeah, the bus is here, so let's set out. Um, from the early morning, we're in high spirits. Travel to the bus at the station, and from there, we board on Nasu Alpaca Kingdom direct bus. The bus departs the terminal on schedule and smoothly merges into the highway, heading straight for the kingdom. The Alpaca Kingdom! A few hours pass. The bus we're on arrives at a ranch in the highlands, which are still chilly with the morning air. Touchdown! Yeah! Fine weather! <sighs> The air is delicious here. Oh, I can see alpacas already. Oh, look at him, he's so adorable. You know, I like alpacas too. I don't know why I do, I just do. Just, I just want to hug one. I want to hug one. I just want to hug it. I want to hug all of them. The moment we pass through the entry gate into the large ranch, many kinds of alpacas come into view. White, black, brown, gray, beige, mixed colored ones, white too. Their faces and fur are all different. Just like humans. Oh, hey, hey, it looks like we can give feed to the ones over here. I believe there is a place we could buy feed nearby. Let's go look. Oh, shit. Alpaca food? Hey, isn't this it? What Yukari finds is a mechanical dispenser. There's a dinky little poster stuck on the top. Alpaca food. Ultra soft. Not for human consumption. Did someone eat this in the past? Looking over at Yukari, she's already buying the alpaca feed. I can't have her beating me to it. I brought all the money from my part-time job today, so... It all fits in my budget. I guess. What's going on? Hey, Kazuma? How much do you plan on buying? Well, after coming all this way, don't you want to feed all the alpacas? Sure, but look at all the kids lined up behind you. Let them have a chance, too. No, fuck the kids. Looks like that bad habit of mine just reared its ugly head again. I get lost in the moment when it comes to alpacas. I just fucking love them. I love alpacas. As I'm feeling remorseful, Yukari gently punches me in the shoulder. Ow! Uh, uh. Come on! You should feed them too, Kazuma! <laughs> Good girl! Eat a bunch! Looks like... Uh, feed the alpaca. Alright. Looks like Yukari has already sh started feeding an alpaca while I've been feeling sorry for what I did. The alpacas are nice, of course, but it's somehow more pleasing to watch Yukari feed them. She laughs with such joy that it makes me feel happy as well. It's a good choice to come to the alpaca kingdom. Oh. What is it? No, it's nothing. It's alright. I'm gonna feed them too. Okay. I begin feeding them alongside Yukari. The alpacas come over to me too when I offer them food in my hand. Yeah, good boy. By the way, alpacas only have lower teeth. Oh, you're right. That's why it didn't hurt. They're completely herbivorous after all. Or, I mean, uh, I, uh, were you bitten? <laughs> Actually, just a bit ago, it got its teeth on me. Jeez, you need to be careful. I mean, it's fine if you're excited, but, uh... When I look at the alpaca, it's chewing on my entire right hand along with the feet. The alpaca is going through the motions of chewing with such a blissful expression on its face, almost as if it doesn't even notice anything wrong. Oh, 
When it happened to me, it spit mine out so quickly. Your hand must be so tasty, Kazuma. No, no, my hand isn't food. Let it go. I try pulling my hand out, but it just doesn't fucking budge. This guy doesn't intend on letting it go. What to do? <laughs> wow, Fluffy. Good boy. Uh, Yukari? Yukari doesn't seem to mind the predicament I'm in, and is playing around with the alpaca. Whoops. Sorry. Hey, bad Mr. Alpaca. Spit out Cosmo's head. She finally throws me a lifesaver. The alpaca seems to finally give up at Yukari's insistence and releases my hand from its mouth. Well, covered in. Ugh, draw. Here, I have wet naps. Thanks. I take the napkin and wipe my hand. This is about time. Should we have lunch? Sounds good. There aren't many places to eat here in Alpaca Kingdom. Well, I thought of that already, so I bought a picnic lunch with me. Not bad, you carry, not bad. So where should we sit to eat then? Glancing around, I search for a good spot to relax. Ah, uh, how about around there? It's in the shade and it's probably cool there. Sounds good, let's go do that. Move over towards the shaded bench. Ta-da! I tried making a few sandwiches today. She opens up her large lunchbox as she says that. Oh, looks like they came out nicely. There are many types of sandwiches inside, like ham, egg, tomato, and others. I'm not that good at cooking, but I did my best for today. I mean, geez, it's just a sandwich, but Yukari, who normally never cooks, tried her best to make these sandwiches just for today. I mean, why do you gotta cook in a sandwich? What time did she wake up this morning, I wonder? Thinking that she made these for me makes me feel so really fucking happy. Okay, then. A bon appetit. Nom. How, 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 how is it? Nom, nom, nom. Kakazwa? Nom, nom, nom. Yukari looks worried at It's delicious. Thank fucking goodness, so it was all well worth practicing. Yeah, I'm sure you worked real hard at uh, cooking. Um, whatever. She gives me a deep sigh of relief. C cooking uh, is probably not her forte. Yet she's the kind of girl to always at least try. Yukari understands her limits and does her best to push them. That's Yukari. I never say it, but I think that's one of the adorable traits of hers. Uh, thanks. No problem, Holly, too. So adorable. I just want to hug you. Yeah, I'm stuffed. I hope you enjoyed it. Gaze absentmindedly at the alpacas after we finish eating. Time goes by slowly as we relax. You know how alpacas move their front and hind legs on the same side together when they walk? Oh, they do. It's called pacing. All the animals in the Camelidae family move like that. Oh, is that so? On that note, when an animal moves its front and hind legs and the opposite side to move forward, it's called trotting. Horses, for example. A little bit of trivia, because I'm just so fucking smart. Alpacas are domesticated for their high quality fur up in the plateaus of the Andes, where they are generally found. Ah, I've heard that before. Alpaca fur sells for quite a bit, doesn't it? Yep, yep. You sure do know a lot when it comes to alpacas, Cosmo. Yep. I don't call myself an alpaca lover for nothing. I say that, but I only learned these little details after we decided to come to Alpaca Kingdom. Better be that you researched this offer today. Erk. 
Not bad, Yukiri. How could you tell? What? Because, Kazuma, you said this morning you made sure the research beforehand. I do recall that I said something like that. Yukari does remember quite a lot of the stuff I say. I always forget stuff so quickly. Actually, when comparing women to men in terms of memory, I feel like women are generally better at recalling things. She always remembers when I'm wrong. It makes me mad. I wonder how true that is, though. Since we are going to come here, I just wanted to expand my knowledge, you know? Because even if by just a bit more, because I'm, I just want to be show you I'm smart and I'm a deep thinker. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. There's an awkward silence. Um. Kari speaks with a solemn expression. What? If. Just if. I became an alpaca. Would you still love me, Cosma? Of course. Why this all of a sudden, though? No, it's nothing, thanks. Could it be you're feeling a bit jealous towards the alpacas? <laughs> what? No, man. I know that you've been looking at me as well. He tells me that I feel a bit flustered. Yukari expresses her emotions very frankly. Usually I would tease her a little, but not today. Make sure you look at me too, Yukari. Oh. Yeah. You can't bless you shyly. Alright, now then, let's go play with the alpacas. Because I don't like awkward silences. Aw, the baby alpaca was so cute. Our afternoon in Alpaca Kingdom involves taking a stroll with the alpacas. If you really, uh, if, you, if you reserve it ahead of time, then you can walk freely around Alpaca Kingdom with the baby alpaca. It's pretty popular, by the way, so I suggest reserving in the morning when the crowd is too small. We managed to finish a lap around the ranch. That was a close to an hour's worth of time. Yeah, they had such tiny, innocent eyes. Kazuma, did you try to secretly ride the alpaca back there? Fuck! Of course I did! Jeez, it's so mean! Well, but aren't you interested? Like, it probably feels really nice. Well, it sure does look like it would be nice. But that's not the problem! Yukari's voice is strangely gruff. They handle the children before you walk if you're not allowed to ride them at all, didn't he? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Mr. C, but we need to follow the fucking rules. What if riding the alpaca costs an injury? That would be awful. Does she mean me or the alpaca? The alpaca was hurt, then they'd stop offering this stroll. Ah, oh, she meant the alpaca. Fuck me, I guess. And if you were hurt on my birthday, I'd be really sad. That's right. It's Yukari's birthday today. I want Yukari to be smiling all day long. Breaking the rules and making Yukari sad is one of the things I must ever, ever do. Yeah, you're right. I apologize. No, it's okay. I apologize for yelling, too. She forgives me when I apologize. It's probably the perfect time to give Yukari her birthday present. Hey, uh, Yukari? No, it's fine. This isn't trying to make up for it. Here, your birthday present. Huh? Happy birthday, Yukari. Hey, is this? Is this for me? I bought this just for you. Though I'm not sure if you'll like it. Uh... Thanks! <laughs> C can I see what's inside? Go ahead. Kai removes the wrapping neatly. Every movement she makes is lit by the evening sun. And she looks quite beautiful. Oh, 
The present I picked out for her is a tiny violin pendant. The gift isn't worth much, as I don't have a lot of money, but some clothes come from my feelings for you, Kiri. I was so happy just to be all back in Kingdom and now I'm getting such a cute present. Thank you so much, I feel like such a lucky girl. Doesn't end there. I'm gonna make you feel luckier and luckier, girl. Oh? So stay with me from here on out. We're going back to the hotel. Okay. <laughs> that brings down the curtain of our alpaca kingdom day. Now to just get on the bus and head back to the hotel. That was so much fun. I wish I could spend my time like this every day. If I'm with you, Kree. And I'm sure it will be like that. I fall asleep on the bus when we get on. Teague haven't built up over the day. Am I dreaming? A violin melody could be <laughs> not that voice. Violin melody could be heard in the distance. It's a pleasing sound. Summer in the highlands is calm and clear. Gentle breezes. As I stand in the grassy plains, still damp with morning dew, quietly close my eyes and my ear to that refreshing fucking melody. The love of my life was at my side. We held each other's hands, wishing we could stay here like this forever. <laughs> What the fuck? I can hear someone call my name. That voice is from the love of my life. We'll be at the bus station soon. Uh, but what? <laughs> you slept like a baby. Uh, we woke up early this morning, so you probably were really tired. Yeah, looks like it. I slowly returned the wakefulness. Oh yeah, this is inside the bus, on the way back from the kingdom. The voice ringing in my ears from the love of my life, putting my chair back upright. I turn to the seat next to me. Ah, 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 ah. Long curve. Beady dark eyes. Smiling like that. Yes. Alpaca. Uh, uh, alpaca! Oh, 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 oh. Sitting so in a polite fashion on the narrow seat next to me with the legs folded smartly, there is for some reason an alpaca wearing Yukari's clothes. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? This is... 
welcome to what is this fucking game called again? Fucking alpaca dating sim game. What the fuck? This is this is gonna be weird. Oh man. Okay, that was episode one. Um, I'll see you next time on uh, the Valentine special, Mad Mirth. Goodbye.